Good morning guys, welcome to week 21 of my quarantine lockdown here in Cebu, Philippines. Woke up to an earthquake this morning. Going to go into some news for the Philippines in relation to the coronavirus and we're also going to look at the stats. So let's get to the video, lots to show. Worldwide total cases exceeds 22 million with over three quarters of a million deaths and nearly 15 million recoveries. By country, the same five have been at the top of this list for many weeks now. Number one is USA with 5.6 million cases, nearly 2.5 million active cases. Looking at the Philippines, it's at number 22, which it was last week. I just wanna highlight the active cases, as you can see in the graph here. It was the biggest single day of COVID-19 recoveries. I've shown previously in my other videos, the way they record this. So in the Philippines, total cases is 164,474. Of this, 49,034 are active cases. Deaths at 2,681 people. Daily new cases have still been quite high. One shining star has been Cebu, where the cases continue to decline, as shown in the graph. The local government puts it down to aggressive and extensive contact tracing, but they have warned not to be complacent. I think if there's no new flare-ups of cases in Cebu, the metro areas of Cebu, including Mandawi and Lapu Lapu, they should downgrade to an MGCQ by September 1. Fingers crossed. The Department of Health website goes into more details with bed allotments and other stuff in relation to the COVID-19 if you're interested to learn more. So let's look at some stories that are making news this week in the Philippines. So this week the government updated the quarantine status of the Philippines. Areas still staying under the GCQ are shown. This will be in place until the 31st of August. So other areas in the Philippines are under the less restricted MGCQ. With the better coronavirus news in Cebu, Lapu Lapu City is gearing up for reopening its tourism industry for domestic guests anyhow. Government officials have been expecting resorts to make sure the safety protocols are up to standard. I recommend having a look at the resorts directly or on their Facebook pages as many have promos going at really, really good rates. Oslo reports the whale shark industry is struggling with low numbers of tourists. At the moment, they're only getting about 10 guests a day. I think that'll ramp up though next month if Cebu goes into the MGCQ. From September 1, Cafe Pacific will be flying back into Cebu. No international tourists yet though allowed in the Philippines. Places like MAC-10 Airport now are going to require you to wear one of these face shields. I have seen more and more people wearing these out in the street. I have tried it out there in the tropics when you put this on and the sun it gives you that bit of a greenhouse effect on your face. It makes it really hot and uncomfortable. This is the statement from MAC-10 Airport. Public transport companies will be fined if drivers, conductors or passengers do not wear these face shields. So this is going to be the new norm for when traveling in the Philippines. The government is eager to get their hands on access to the COVID-19 vaccine when it comes out, with China and Russia leading the way to get the vaccine out first. The Philippines will trial phase three of the clinical trials of the Russian vaccine from October to March 2021. This morning there was an earthquake here in Mespati, which was felt here in Cebu. I felt my room shake a bit, not enough to make glasses rattle or anything. You could definitely feel it shaking under your feet. It did make me a bit nervous. There was a slightly different magnitude rating depending on which news article you looked at. But at the location, as you can see in the photos, the damage it did cause. Thank you so much for watching. Keep safe out there and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.